Hi everyone, welcome back to Storytime Recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the film from 2016, The Thinning. Without any further, let's get started. In 2039, there are too many people on Earth, and the human race is in danger of extinction. In response to the United Nations directive that all countries must yearly reduce their populations by 5%, the United States enacts a policy known as the thinning. Students in the thinning are required to appear for an annual standardized test. Whoever fails the test is put to death through drug injection. At the beginning of the film, Simon, a high school student, is being tutored by Lena Michaels. Since Simon appears to be having trouble with the equations, he asks Lena for something. She pulls out a lens box and gives it to him. After wear them, Simon can immediately solve all of the math problems. Edward Blake Ridding, the son of Texas Governor Dean Ridding, is shown to us in another place. After slinking out of his home late at night, he meets his lover Ellie Harper in his car. Blake begins discussing the test they have the following day. Ellie is anxious, but Blake reassures her that she will pass. At that moment, Blake's father's bodyguard discovers the them the and returns school. Blake to Dean's office. Dean is disappointed in Blake for sneaking out the night before such an important test. He believes that Blake is being distracted by Ellie. Blake, but she's a distraction. And after that you have the whole rest of your life. The following day, it is the day of the test. There is a long queue of students outside the school, and they must pass a thorough security check before they can in. Blake requests one of Lena's study glasses. Unfortunately, she's out of them. Lena and Kellen Woods, a friend, wait in line to get inside. When one of the students is discovered to be cheating, he tries to flee but is apprehended by the guards. No one has ever been able to escape the exams so or cheat on it. Security footage to the news? Have heard direct personal general inquiry. Blake and Ellie share their final hug inside the school before going inside the exam room. And the test just begin. They have two hours to finish the test. Everyone begins working through the problems on their tablet. Lena is the first to finish each one and solves them all with ease. It looks like her pal Kellen is having trouble. They receive the exam results right away after it is over. Several students who don't pass the exam are being called names by the teacher. Students are tense and hoping that this would end quickly. Those students who don't pass are seized by the guards. Some even attempt to flee, but the guards will brutally attack them. Fortunately, Blake, Kellen, and Lena all pass. But, the teacher calls Blake's girlfriend Ellie at the last second, and the guards remove her. He makes a quick call to his dad, pleading with him to assist Ellie. His father disagrees, claiming that everyone is subject to the same laws. Frustrated, he ran to do it himself. He confronts the guards and encourages Ellie to flee, but to no avail no one would be able to get away. Blake does not give up on Ellie. However, he is at a loss for what else to do. A year has passed, and the thinning test is just 24 hours away. This is Corrine, Lena's younger sister, taking her first thinning exam. When the doorbell rings, it's Lena's teacher, Miss Birch, who has been taking care of Lena and Corrine since their mother passed away. She attempts to comfort Lena since she is anxious about her sister, and tomorrow is Corrine's first test. However, she reassures them that everything will be alright. Blake, in the meantime, records a video in his room with the intention of teaching his father a lesson by marking every incorrect response on the test. On test day, Lena drops his sister off at her kindergarten. In Corrine's lesson, they watch a video animation that depicts the current status of the world and the requirement that all countries reduce their population by 5% annually. Some of these countries have imposed restrictions on the number of children a couple can have, while others have executed the elder generation. But in America, the government chose to keep only the brightest and execute the others, and these kids are no different. When the kids' exam begins, their teacher is upset because some of the kids are going to be put to death. Thankfully, Corrine passes the exam. Lena and Kellen show up at the school to take their tests, which go quickly. The test results are in, and to everyone's surprise, Lena's Lena name Michaels. is called as well. Upon learning that she has failed the test, Miss Birch stops the guard and argues that since she is her greatest student, there must be a bug in the system. The outcomes are set in stone and cannot be reversed, but she gives Lena a key card so she can unlock the doors and escape. 
Blake is taken aback by his success. To celebrate their achievements, the passing students show up to a school celebration. In another location, Dean is announcing his candidacy for us president in a speech delivered in his capacity as governor. He brags about their educational system, claiming that it has allowed them to rank first out of 196 nations in terms of educational quality. There has been a 26% decline in crime. While at the party, Blake hears his father's we speech and then leaves secretly. After sneaking into the hallway and beating one of the guards, he enters the control room. In the interim, Lena and the failing students are led into a room and positioned up against a wall. They have to, to take off all of their clothing for the sake of decontamination. Next, the guards take Lena and the others to a room where they are going to be fatally injected. All of a sudden, Blake turns off the electricity, leaving the school completely black. Taking advantage of this opportunity, the students who are going to be put to death try to escape by releasing themselves, but Elena is the only one who is successful. She exits the room using the key card her teacher gave her. Mason enters the room shortly after and requests a head count. They discover Lena is missing and begin searching for her. After locating Lena, Blake assists her in taking down one of the guards. As they talked, they became aware that Blake and Lena's results had been changed. They both duck into a vent and hide, then proceed to the server room by following the network wires, where they can use the computer to view the results. Meanwhile, because of the power outage, the school remains completely locked down. When the news breaks outside, it is televised throughout the entire state. Concerned parents outside prompt Governor Dean to phone Mason and inquire about what's happening. We have zero room for failure. In the meantime, the vents beneath Blake burst, causing him to fall into the below-ground pool. As Lena jumps after him and pulls him out of the water, he is not breathing. After performing CPR on him and saving his life, Lena and Blake change into some clothing they found in the locker room of the swimming pool. After that, they proceed through the vents to enter the server room, where a guard stands in front of the entrance. Moreover, Lena's key card tumbles down the vent in front of the guard. He doesn't see it, therefore she needs to figure out a way to get it. Her aim is to retrieve the key through the vent by joining a thread with a magnet at the science lab. They proceed to the lab in order to get the necessary equipment. But inside the lab, they create a small sound that prompts the guard to come closer. They make a hasty attempt to flee. As Lena makes it back to the vents, Blake is forced to hide in the lab. Lena makes her way through it in an attempt to get the keys, and she succeeds in raising it halfway. Unexpectedly, a guard notices something, but it's Blake posing as the guard. After defeating the guard, he changed into his clothing. While they are in the room together, Miss Birch flirts with one of the other teachers and manages to obtain his key card. <laughs> I can deal with Hansy. Soon after, the guard that the two of them had earlier attacked tells Mason about them. When he reports that Lena was carrying a key card, Mason calls the teachers together because he thinks someone may have given it to one of the students. While Mason keeps looking through the teacher's ID and key cards, Birch protects herself by presenting the card to the teachers. Mason threatens the other teacher, claiming that he must reveal Lena's location because he does not have his. But while Mason hits him, he maintains that he knows nothing. When Lena eventually makes it to the server room, she uses the key card to unlock the computer, but Mason has password protected it. She then sends a text to Kellen, who is skilled at hacking, requesting access. After a while, Kellen gets Lena's text and assists her in accessing Mason's computer. After that, Lena looks up her scores and discovers that, although failing, she received a 98%. Blake, meanwhile, passed with a 15%. After doing more investigation, she learns that Ellie failed with an 88%. Others, on the other hand, had lower grades than she did. Lena discovers that the governor has been failing anyone he pleases and that the grading system yeah, is controlled. Lena Michaels, a student at 
Lena sends Kellen a file containing the rig grades. However, when the power comes back on, Mason notices that she is in the server room. When Lena realizes this, she bolts, but Mason quickly catches up with her. In contrast, Blake remains in disguise and is surrounded by the failed students. He gives the guard the order to bring them and the other students into the recreation hall. However, the guard declines, and they fight as a result. After learning his identify, the guards put him in restraint. When she receives Lena's message at that very moment, Kellen is taken aback to see the actual outcome. Since Kellen is familiar with the news anchor, he sends the news station an email right away. The reports broadcast the news showing the receipts of the Breaking altercation and the campus. results. Moments ago, we received official documents favor or target specific students. Following the photo leak, the leader of the governor's party calls and makes a threat to withdraw his presidential candidacy. Unwilling to let that happen, Dean Reading throws all the accusations at Mason and pretends that he is innocent. In an attempt to prove this, he is forced to put to death everyone who didn't succeed including his own son Blake. Right now, God damn it, Dean, are you listening? Lena and the others are brought to the school's thinning room by Mason, one of the guards, where they will be executed. While Blake is also there, Mason phones Dean to inquire if the students should be put to death. Dean orders him to stop saying that he wants to put his own son and the other pupils who have truly failed to death. Lena is set free together with other pupils who pass the exam by the guards. Blake receives a kiss from Lena, but the guards sees him and the others who have failed. They inject them with a medication to put them to death. As the lockdown comes to an end, Lena is reunited with Miss Birch and her younger sister, Corrine. A few hours later, the bodies of the students who were put to death are shown being transported underground in an elevator. The students begin to move, indicating that the substance they received via injection was a sleeping pill. When they go to a place resembling a factory, they stop. It is full with products made by the tech company Asuru Global. The factory is populated with numerous individuals. So Blake is taken aback to see that Ellie, his love, is among them. That suggests that the students who are meant to be put to death are actually taken underground and used as slave labor for a corporation worth millions of dollars. The government organized this entire scheme in order to obtain free labor. Thanks for watching, and remember to turn on your notifications to watch more movie recaps like this one.